What are the different types of identity theft? Hi, this is consumer protection attorney Bill Clanton, and I've helped hundreds of consumers deal with inaccurate credit reporting, debt collection harassment, and other consumer-related matters. Uh, one thing that people ask about or should know is the different types of identity theft. Before I talk about the different types, I want to read to you the definition of identity theft. Texas law defines identity theft differently than federal law. In Texas, identity theft is obtaining, possessing, transferring, or using personal identifying information without consent or effective consent. That's, that's an important point. With the intent to obtain a good service, insurance, an extension of credit, or any other thing of value in the other person's name. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that identity theft occurs when somebody other than you uses your identity or your credit cards or anything else to obtain something, good service, insurance, or something else of value without your consent or effective consent. So if they do it without your consent, it means that somebody sneaks into your wallet or your purse and takes your credit card and goes and uses it. That's a very basic form of identity theft. Now, without your effective consent, it means that somebody forces you to use your credit card. Now, this can occur in relationships, domestic violence situations sometimes, where somebody will force you to buy something or sign off on a credit agreement or use your credit card to purchase something. And as long as you don't get any benefit from that, then that is a form of identity theft under Texas law. Now, what are the other general types of identity theft? Well, there is uh, new account fraud. That is when an identity thief takes out a new account in your name. This happens, this is a very common type of identity theft, and it's very easy to detect by looking at your credit report. A different type of identity theft that's related to this is where an identity thief creates a hybrid or a simulated identity. They create a hybrid person where it's part you and part them or part you and part somebody else. Um, identity thieves tend to like to put some of their own information into the uh, created identity or the hybrid identity so that they can recognize it more easily. I, it is my thinking. That's why they do it. I don't, I don't know. But... Um, but what will happen is an identity thief will take your first name and their last name. They'll take your social security number and their address, um, their driver's license number and your birth date. And they'll create a hybrid person. They'll use that hybrid person to go out and take out new accounts, to go and lease an apartment, to buy a car, to do all kinds of things. And you won't know. Some of the stuff may appear on your, your credit report. Some of it may appear on a different credit report. but or, or the credit agencies may make up a new person based on this hybrid identity, a hybrid, whole hybrid person. It's, it, it's bizarre how this can play out in credit reporting. Um, but it can impact you, and it can wind up on your credit report, and it is considered identity theft for someone to create a hybrid identity based on you. Um, New account fraud, criminal identity theft. There's criminal identity theft, employment identity theft, tax identity theft, and medical identity theft. And these can, somebody can open up uh, or, or take your identity, take your credentials, and go and apply for a job and direct the payments go to their bank account while the tax liability goes to you, etc. But a lot of times, these identities, these come about in a different way. Um, somebody may be in the United States and trying to hide because of immigration consequences or tax consequences uh, or uh, criminal penalty consequences. Some people are on the run and they can take out a new identity. How do they do this? Well, you know, if you read spy books from the 1950s and 60s, they would talk about spies who, who create a new identity out of um, applying in a different name with a, for a driver's license. But all that stuff, the databases we have now are so thorough, you can't really do that. But what people can do now is they can 
buy an identity. You can buy, identity thieves will sometimes collect identities in mass and sell them on the black market. Or I'm sure you've heard about all these data breaches, Experian data breaches. There's data breaches happening all the time that you don't hear about. Those can be the basis for identities that are sold on the black market. So somebody can go to the dark web and buy an identity and it could be yours. It could be mine, it could be anybody's identity that's for sale on the dark web. They can buy that identity and then create documents out of it. But more commonly, it comes from data breaches. Hackers will break into databases and download all kinds of information and then turn that over to the black market or sell it themselves. And, and that's the reason behind these data breaches. They can sell these identities and make money. So somebody may have purchased your identity and may be living as you in another state, working under your name and social security number in another state, collecting tax benefits. This is a, a tax identity fraud will happen when somebody who's living under your identity files a tax return before you do, and they will get your tax return, your, your, your uh, tax benefit for the year. Uh, medical debts. If this person goes to the doctor, they'll be using your identity. They'll have a identity uh, a driver's license from another state in your name with their address and their picture, and they will go to the doctor and run up a medical bill on your identity. They will get arrested and claim they are you for criminal identity fraud. And if you ever get in trouble with the law, then you'll see that you'll be accused of having a long rap sheet in another state where you've never lived. This really happens. Identity theft happens. And it's a terrible situation to find yourself in. If you don't recognize transactions on your credit report, or you're getting debt collection letters from companies and credit agreements that you don't recognize, you may be the victim of identity theft. And there are powerful tools that you can put to work for you that can help clear the situation up. This video is just about different types of identity theft. Be on the lookout for another video on how to fix or how to start fixing an identity theft situation. Thanks for watching this video.